Welcome back to the Professor's Lab. I'm Professor V, and this is round two of the League Challenge that happened at Die Hard Games on September 28th, 2023. If you didn't know, Die Hard League happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central at Die Hard Games, featuring casual and tournament play of whatever format anyone wants, really. More info in the description and League Challenge, Thursday, October 12th at 6 p.m. Central at Die Hard Games. Check out Pokemon's Event Locator for more premier events at Die Hard Games, such as League Challenges, League Cups, and Pre-Releases. Please hit that like button right quick, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, say what you need to say in the comments, and all that other good stuff. But anyways, let's get into this round two on the left. Chien Pao, Arceus, Baxcalibur on the right, Single Strike, Lugia. Single Strike Lugia is starting things off with a captivating aroma flipping tails on that there. Tails means you search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it into your hand. Uh, so let's see, I can't tell what's in the active there. I think it's a Lugia V. Um, you're pretty safe to assume your Lugia V will not get KO'd on your opponent's first turn. So you can find something else, such as that Squawkabilly EX there with its Squawk and Seize ability that you can only use on your first turn. If we use it, I'll describe what all it does. Uh, jet energy debated on being attached here and where it should go. Uh, definitely have to uh, place your energy attachments wisely in the Pokemon trading card game. It'll actually be attached to the active Lugia V there. Um, don't really want to bring your squawk ability into the active spot there because then you have to be able to get it out of the active spot next turn. So jet energy going on to the active Lugia is fine here. And let's see what else our player has before the inevitable squawk and seize. You don't put squawk ability down if you don't plan on using that ability. Anything else to play in the hand? It looks like we're getting rid of uh, Archeops. That's good. Uh, so squawk, squawk and seize. You can only use it on your first turn. But when you do, discard your hand and draw six new cards. We got one Archeops in the discard pile there. I've seen a... Um, um, single strike energy go as well, but that's okay because they can be recycled later with Urn of Vitality. Play will be passed over to Chien Pao. Double Frigibat hits the bench. Chien Pao EX as well joins the party. We're going to want to see that um, Chien Pao become active this turn, uh, but not before a Nest Ball being played. Nest Ball item card lets you search your deck for a basic Pokemon and add it to your bench. Can you play a Nest Ball? If your bench is full, can you burn a nest ball if your bench is full? Let me know in the comments. It's your professor uh, quiz for this video. Nest ball will find the second Chien Pao. Not the other full art one, but you know, it gets the job done. That's what matters here. So yeah, we're getting a pretty nice board set up here on this uh, Chien Pao Bax Caliber Arceus variant of this deck. Got the Arceus out, double Frigibax, double Chien Pao, and Iono. Iono supporter, both players shuffle their hand, put their hand at the bottom of their deck, and then draw prizes equal to their remaining prize cards. So both players will get six cards here. And say goodbye to the ones that were in hand there at the bottom of the deck. Water energy being attached to the full art bench Chien Pao EX. Escape rope being played. Escape Rope as an item card that has your opponent promote a new active Pokemon first, and then you do the same. So that Squawkabilly flying into the active spot, Frigibax coming into the active spot as well, and passes things over. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I probably would have liked to have seen the Chiam Pao EX become active, so that way the Shivery Chill ability could be used to thin the deck of two water energy. You want those in your hand, and you're not going to top deck them. Um, but uh, that's just my thoughts. Who knows what um, the player has in hand, because that, that really matters to what all the player has in hand. That that influence, influences decisions, too. Either way, putting a single prize in the active spot and passing is uh, pretty good, too. Capturing Aroma being played here on Lugia's side. Um, flipping heads on that one, so that way a uh, evolution Pokemon will be found here. That Archeops being found. Tyranitar V hitting the bench, and now we need to see 
that Archeops be put into the discard pile with something like Ultra Ball. Oh, I see the Ultra Ball in hand, so we've got it. We've got it this turn. Now just uh, the proper sequencing here and uh, discarding the proper cards with the Ultra Ball. Um, double Turbo Energy being debated on being played here, um, potentially being put on the active Squawk ability in order to retreat it. Lugia V-Star has that powerful Summoning Star V-Star ability, which brings back those two Archeops from the discard pile. So it looks like the double turbo energy actually will be attached to the Ben's Tyranitar, along with a Vitality Ban, giving it plus 10 damage to its attacks. Okay, probably going to go in with the Tyranitar this turn, attacking. But we still need to see that Ultra Ball being played to discard Archeops and some other card to find the Lugia V-Star. We've got the two Archeops in the discard power now. Lugia's V-Star ability, as I said, can bring back two normal type Pokemon from the discard pile and put them onto the bench. And the targets are always preferred to be <laughs> double Archeops with their powerful Primal Turbo ability to accelerate that special energy out of the discard pile. I think our player might have left for um, bathroom break or some other um, relevant reason. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, keep things rolling here. Um, so we had the energy attached to the bench. Uh, no, we, players, players back. Maybe just went off screen for a minute. Ignore my um, bathroom break babbling. Summoning Star being used here on the uh, Lugia V Star to put those two Archeops from the discard pile back or into play onto the bench. First Primal Turbo being used to accelerate two special energy from the deck to a Pokemon. So one energy being put on the active Squawk ability so that way it can attack and a single strike energy being accelerated to the um, well let's see probably what the second primal turbo so remember primal turbo can only accelerate two energy to one pokemon to a pokemon so this is still legal so long it was as long it, so long as it was the second primal turbo accelerating the single strike energy to the bench tyranitar v we shall see here in a moment i'm sure it was and it looks like we're going to go in with the Tyranitar V's Cragalanche attack. Discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Okay. So with the uh, Primal Turbo, or sorry, with the Double Turbo Energy, let's see, Cragalanche base is 60, Double Turbo reduces it by 20, and then um, Rapid Strike Energy increases it by 20, so I think we're still at 60, not enough to KO the 70 HP Frigibax. Either way, Iono being played here. Both players shuffle their hand, put it at the bottom of their deck, and draw for remaining prize cards. Alright. We already attached from hand this turn. That double turbo energy was attached. Squawk ability retreating, manually retreating. And, I, oh, okay, I, excuse me, Professor V here is being silly and is missing the all-important vitality ban on that Tyranitar. Okay, so we had um, everything that happened. The Primal Turbo accelerate one energy to the Squawkabilly. A single strike energy was accelerated with the second Primal Turbo to that Tyranitar V on the bench that has a vitality ban. Squawkabilly retreated. Vitality ban Tyranitar comes up into the active spot. And it's Cragalanche with the double turbo energy and the single strike energy and the vitality band is doing exactly 70 damage. So Cragalanche 70 damage, KO on that Frigibax and discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. So we get to mill some cards as well. Looks like uh, the players caught that here. Don't forget about milling that Ultra Ball that was just drawn and the Irida. Now we can draw for a turn and start things off over on Chiam Pao's side. Chiam Pao EX in the active spot uses its Shivery Chill ability to search the deck for two water energy and put them into their trainer's hand. The hand's getting a little wet here at the League Challenge on a Thursday at the shop. Okay, so Chiam Pao is going to need to have 
four energy discarded. Yes, four energy discarded on its side of the field in order to take the KO on the opposing Trainatar V with its Hail Blade attack. 60 times the amount of water energy you discard from your side of the field. But in order to accelerate all those water energies into play, we need to see Frigibex on the bench there evolve into Bax Caliber. Irida, good thing Irida was in hand then. Irida is a supporter um, that lets you search your deck for a water Pokemon and an item card. So if you didn't have any pieces in the hand, you can just straight up search your deck for Bax Caliber and Rare Candy. So that's what we're probably going to see here. Rare Candy is the item card being found off of Irida, as well as Bax Caliber. So Irida pretty much just says, hey, you got a fridge Bax in play? Go ahead and evolve it into Bax Caliber. But we're still going to need to see, like I said, those four water energy. Fridge Bax evolves straight into Bax Caliber thanks to that Rare Candy. Rare Candy lets you skip the middle evolution and go straight to that stage two. Alright, Stadium being put in play, that's an important one there. Uh, the Skater's Park, I believe. Um, that one says, when your Pokemon manually retreats, instead of the energy going to the discard pile like it normally does, it goes to your hand instead. So good. So a second water energy was attached to uh, the active Qian Pao, and then both of those water energies were bounced back to the trainer's hand thanks to the Skater's Park. Very cool combo here. No pun intended. These things write themselves. And we can talk about, yep, Skater's Park comes down. Energy gets attached to the um, active Chien Pao EX. Both those waters go back into hand. Second Chien Pao EX comes into the active spot. Second Shivery Chill ability being used to find two more water energy from the deck and put them into their hand. I'm pretty sure we're at that four here. Uh, Bax Caliber has that powerful super cold ability which lets you put as much water energy or attach as much water energy from your hand to your Pokemon in play as you like. Four energy being accelerated onto that Chien Pao with that Bax Caliber super cold ability. Its Hail Blade does 60 times the amount of energy discarded in play. Three more energy being accelerated onto that Chien Pao EX on the bench preparing it for next turn and the active Chien Pao uses its Hail Blade attack for 240 damage discarding those four water energy and taking the KO on the opposing Tyranitar V avenging that Frigibax. It looks like Lugia V-Star is promoted into the active spot and play resumes on Lugia's side. Lugia can take a pretty um, easy response KO on this Chien Pao EX in the active spot. Its Tempest Dive, I think that's what its attack is called, does 220 damage base, so if you accelerate um, the proper energies onto, onto it, it'll take the KO. Nest Ball being played here to search the deck for a Tyranitar V and put it onto the bench. The, the reason I say the, the correct energy is uh, because if you put a double turbo on it, on the Lugia, it's going to reduce its attack damage by 20. 200 is not enough to KO Chien Pao, right? Alright, looks like we're going in with a Primal Turbo. Accelerating a couple energies onto the... Well, let's just see what our, play, our player decides to do here. Alright, so it looks like Gift Energy and Jet Energy are accelerated to the Bench Tyranitar V, and Double Turbo Energy and Gift Energy are accelerated to the active uh, Lugia. A single Strike Energy manually attached to the Bench Tyranitar. Huh, okay, boss's orders. <laughs> okay, boss's orders being played here um, to bring up that powered up Chien Pao from the bench into the active spot. Power support, powerful supporter. Boss's orders. Um, collapse Stadium being put into play, limiting both players' bench to four. 
bumping that skater's park, more importantly, I'm sure. And it looks like the Lugia is going to attack for 200 damage into that Chiampao EX. I think that's what we're seeing. There's a little bit of a pause here, um, which is why I'm a little unsure. Um, but we will see what our, our players end up doing here. Uh, yeah, Tempest Dive right now is doing 200 damage. Um, thanks or no thanks to, <laughs> to that double turbo energy. Um, so maybe the player um, could have accelerated. Ah, okay. I see what they were thinking. Alright, they were wanting to actually accelerate the double turbo energy and the gift energy to the bench Tyranitar maybe and accelerate the jet energy and the gift energy to the uh, active Lugia in order to take the KO. We'll see what our players uh, work out here. Taking a look at Collapse Stadium, making sure we're resolving that correctly. Okay, so it looks like the players um, are working it out, and uh, our Chien Pao player was very nice here, and um, let the um, Lugia player redo their Primal Turbo energy attachment, energy attachments, and instead of attaching that double turbo energy, we're going to use one Primal Turbo to accelerate a... Um, gift energy and a jet energy to the active Lugia and the second primal turbo will accelerate that other gift energy <laughs> onto the uh, active Lugia there. Lugia now has four different colorless energy attached to it. None of them are double turbo so now it is doing um, Tempest Dive for 220 damage enough to take the KO on the opposing Chien Pao. Uh, thank you all for uh, bearing with me here while we were figuring things out but um, uh, shout out to our um, Chien Pao player for being a good sport and um, letting the um, Lugia player uh, place the energy attachments where it, it pretty much made sense to, I guess. Um, single Strike Energy was still manually attached to the Bench Tyranitar. Lugia takes the KO on the opposing Chien Pao, the, the powered up one more importantly with that boss's order to play. And uh, play will resume over on Chien Pao's side. Again, thank you guys for your patience while we work through that situation there. Radiant Greninja being put in play on the left. It uses its uh, Concealed Cards ability to discard an energy card and draw two cards. And yeah, we're seeing the double gift energy, jet energy, and another jet energy. Double jet, double gift on that active Lugia V there. Allowing its temp Tempest Dive to do 220 damage. And let's see, we will need five energy discarded on Chan Pao's side in order to take the response KO on this active Lugia V. So we're going to want to see something like that superior energy retrieval to bring back up to four basic energy from the discard pile back into the hand. Shivery Chill can find the other one or two energy needed then to take the KO on this Lugia. Uh, cross switcher actually being played here. Cross switcher, you play two of them at the same time. You have to. When you do, you can bring up one of your opponent's Pokemon from the bench into the active spot, and then you do the same on your side of the field. So, uh, Archeops being brought up into the active spot, and Radiant Greninja opposing it on Chien Pao's side's active spot. Maybe more of a stall play here. Yep, stall play here. Uh, seeing if we can stall out the Lugia player and play resumes on Lugia's side. Primal Turbo being used here on the uh, one of the Archeops uh, to search the deck for up to two special energy cards and attach them to a Pokemon. So a single V Guard energy being accelerated onto the active Archeops, so now it can pay its retreat cost. Archeops retreats into that Lugia V-Star. 
and Serena for game. Serena is a uh, supporter card that has two different options. Um, one option is draws you cards. The other option is kind of like a boss's orders, but only on V Pokemon. So you can bring up uh, from your opponent's bench one of their V Pokemon into the active spot. And uh, there was a Chien. No, there, there was the. Oh no, the Arceus. Arceus on the bench. So that stinks. That didn't evolve to give it more HP. The Arceus has 220 HP. That's brought into the active spot with the Serena. Arceops retreats into the Lugia V-Star that can do 220 damage. Yep, Serena being used to bring up the um, the Arceus V, Lugia V-Star, takes the KO on the Arceus V, takes two prizes, going down to one prize, and I think that was just enough to have the um, Chien Pao player offer the concession. And Lugia V Star takes the game here. What do you guys think of this uh, video and choppy commentary? <laughs> Please let me know in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Professor's Lab.